Hi, my name is Brahms, Chrome Developer Relations Engineer here at Google. At last year's I.O., I shared that we shipped same document view transitions in Chrome 111, a milestone event for the web platform as a whole, that's for sure. With view transitions, you are able to create powerful, immersive, native-like experiences that have seamless transitions between views of your web app, such as seen in this wonderful demo by Maxi Ferreira. The launch in Chrome 111 wasn't the end goal for view transitions. It was only the beginning. Our engineers have continued to work on it in close collaboration with the various standards bodies, such as the CSS Working Group and the Wattwake. As a result, we are shipping a bunch of refinements in Chrome that give you better control over view transitions. Additionally, and most importantly, we are also shipping cross-document view transitions for use in your multi-page applications or MPAs. Yes, you heard it right. You don't need to re-architect your web app to a single page application in order to use view transitions. Let's dive in. Before I jump into cross-document view transitions, let's do a small recap of same document view transitions for single page applications. It's been amazing to see what all of you have built using view transitions, ranging from the typical implementations that make the thumbnail grow into the big photo, to these highly customized, immersive experiences, such as this one from Airbnb. Simply amazing. It's also very delightful to see that many front-end frameworks have adopted view transitions as a first-class feature. Adding view transitions to your SPAs has never been easier. At its core, regardless of which framework or approach you use, same document view transitions revolve around one single line of JavaScript, document.startViewTransition. When invoked, the browser automatically captures snapshots of all elements that have a view transition name CSS property declared on them. It then executes the pass and callback that updates the DOM, after which it takes snapshots of the new state. These snapshots then get arranged in a tree of pseudo elements, which get animated using the power of CSS animations. Snapshot pairs from the old and new states smoothly transition from their old position and size to their new location while their content crossfades. Since these are CSS animations, you can throw a bit of CSS at it to customize the experience. If you want to know more about creating same document view transitions, check out this article for a full write-up. Our Chrome engineers have been working hard on the next step for view transitions, namely cross-document view transitions, which we aim to ship in the first half of 2024. Now, to be clear, I'm talking about view transitions for cross-document navigations on the same origin here. Cross-document meaning when going from one page to another, and same origin that the origin of both pages must be the same. The origin of a page is a combination of the used scheme, hostname, and port. For example, while you can have a view transition in this case right here, because the URLs are same origin, you can't in this case because the URLs are same site, but cross origin. Visit the URL shown on screen to learn more about same site and same origin. So, on top of being able to run a same document view transition, which is typically the case in a single page application or SPA, you can now also have a view transition between two different pages in your multi-page application or MPA on the same origin. Cross-document view transitions rely on the very same building blocks and principles as same document view transitions. One, the browser takes snapshots of elements that have a unique view transition name on both the old and new page. Two, the DOM gets updated while rendering is suppressed. And finally, three, the transitions are powered by CSS animations. What's different is that with cross-document view transitions, you don't need to call document.startViewTransition anymore to start the view transition. Instead, the trigger for a cross-document view transition is the same origin navigation from one page to another, an action that is typically performed by the user of your website clicking a link. In other words, there is no API to call in order to trigger the view transition. But there is one condition that needs to be fulfilled. Namely, both pages need to opt in to allowing the view transition. Last year, we experimented with a meta tag to do this. This was a temporary measure to allow authors to test things out. The new way of opting into an MPA view transition happens from within CSS. You do this using the add view transition add rule. 
set the navigation descriptor to auto to enable view transitions for cross document same origin navigations. When navigating from one page to the other, you may want to customize the view transition depending on which page you are coming from or which page you are going to. To do this, we've shipped two new events that you can hook onto, page swap and page reveal. In both events, you get the opportunity to take action based on the URLs of the old and the new pages. In these events, you also have access to the view transition object. If you want, you can decide to skip the view transition here altogether. Page swap is a new event that fires for every cross document navigation right before the document renders its last frame from which the snapshots on the old page get captured. Unlike the navigate event, which fires ahead of page swap, the page swap event includes a navigation activation object for same origin navigations. This object contains a final destination URL, the navigation type, and a reference to the destination entry in window.navigation.entries. This gives you the opportunity to do some last minute changes before the old snapshots get captured based on those URLs. You could, for example, apply a view transition name on a specific element to give it a special meaning. Turning to the new page, there you have a page reveal event. The event gets fired at the window when the page begins to render for the first time after it has been initialized or reactivated. It is a way for you to execute some JavaScript that affects the presentation just in time for the first frame. Inside the page reveal event, you can get info about the navigation through the navigation.activation object, which is also something that is newly available in Chrome. Put together, you get this effect. In the page swap and page reveal events, I set the view transition names on the elements that need to participate. On the old page, that is the element that was clicked, and on the new page, that's the element's target destination. That way, I don't have to decorate each and every item in the list with a view transition name up front. Instead, I do it on the fly. In some cases, you might want to hold off the first render of a page until a certain element is present in the new DOM. This to avoid flashing and to make sure the state you're animating to is stable. In the head of your page, you can define one or more element IDs that need to be present before the page gets its first render using this meta tag. Note that this only means that the element should be present in the DOM, not that its contents should be loaded. For images, for example, the mere presence of the IMG tag with that ID in the DOM tree is enough for the condition to evaluate it true. The image itself could still be loading. If you're wondering about the implications on your core app files when blocking rendering, here goes. LCP could possibly be delayed because you are effectively delaying when you can display the new contents. So one to keep an eye on to make sure the UX gains of the animation don't overly impact the UX loss of a slower page load. On the other hand, you might actually end up improving your CLS score because in some cases you avoid rendering of unstable intermediate layout states. As for INP, this shouldn't really change one way or the other because users typically do not interact during transitions. The impact of blocking rendering needs to be evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis. By default, I would refrain from using blocking equals render unless you can actively measure and gauge the impact it has on your users by measuring the impact on your core app files. Now, something that can aid with LCP and for best effect of cross-page view transitions in general is to make sure that your pages load fast. For this, you can consider pre-rendering using the Speculation Rules API now available in Chrome. Add a snippet like this one right here to your pages to get started. With this snippet, Chrome will already start loading a page when hovering over the link for 200 milliseconds or on mouse or touchdown if it matches the specified href in the speculation rules. This can shave some time of the loading time perceived by the user. Visit the link shown on screen to learn more about the speculation rules API as there are a bunch of options to configure. Here's a comparison of the same website without pre-rendering on the left and with pre-rendering on the right. As you can see, the one with pre-rendering performs better. It's great to see various partners successfully use pre-rendering to create near-instant view transitions in their MPA. For more details on pre-loading and pre-rendering, go check out Barry Pollard's talk from fast loading to instant loading, linked in the description. Before I move on to the next part, I cannot help but stress that incremental rendering is a fundamental aspect of the web. So please be cautious when opting in to use blocking rendering. 
Besides working on view transitions for MPA, we also did some refinements to working with view transitions in general. These advancements apply to both SPA and MPA view transitions. A first refinement is the view transition class. This allows you to tag a bunch of elements that participate in a view transition with a certain class. You then use that class to animate all those snapshots in the same way. Without view transition classes, if you want to apply the same animation to multiple elements, you not only need to give them a unique view transition name, but you also need to apply the animation related styles on every element by growing the selector so that it matches all elements. Got 20 elements? Well, that's 20 selectors, please. Not exactly scalable. With view transition classes can be made simpler. While you still need to add a unique view transition name for the capturing to work, you can add a view transition class to all elements. Here I set the value to box. This value can then be used in any of the view transition pseudos, allowing you to deduplicate a lot of the animation code. As mentioned before, without view transition class, I had to define the animation for each and every individual element. Whereas now I apply the same animation styles to all participating elements that have that view transition class. That means I can now also easily add more box elements to the page without needing to inject extra animation styles. And no, if you want, you can combine a view transition name and a view transition class in the selector. Another refinement is the introduction of adding types to a view transition when capturing and performing it. This makes it easier to work with various view transitions on the same page without the declarations of the one stepping onto the toes of the other. For example, going to the next or the previous page in a pagination might require different animations. Or when you have a few items in a list, you most likely want different animations when reordering these items versus when adding or removing a new item. Before, the typical way of solving this was to add classes to the DOM so that you could respond to these classes in your CSS. That meant you also had to do cleanup afterwards. With view transition types, you can achieve the same result, but with the added benefit of these types automatically getting cleaned up once the view transition has finished. To use types in the same document view transition, you need to pass the types into the start view transition method. To allow this, document.startViewTransition now also accepts an object. Update is a callback function that updates the DOM, and types is an array with the types. For a cross document view transition, you set the types in the add view transition add rule. There you have a type descriptor that accepts one or more comma separated values. In both cases, you can read and write these values on a view transition object. For example, in the page swap or page reveal events, which I mentioned earlier. Note though that in MPA, the types are not automatically transferred from the old page VT object to the new page VT object. With the type set, you can respond to these types in your CSS using the active view transition type pseudo class selector, which applies to the view transition root. Its argument is the name of the type that you want to respond to. If you want to target any active view transition, regardless of the type, you can use the active view transition pseudo class selector instead. Like I said before, these types automatically get cleaned up when the view transition finishes. Because of that, types play nice with BF cache and also when starting a new view transition in your SPA, as you now always start with a clean slate, without you needing to do anything extra. We're not done with view transitions as a whole just yet. There are still a bunch of features that we aim to ship in the future. At top of mind are scope transitions, which allow you to start a view transition on a subtree of the DOM. These keep the page responsive while a view transition is running and multiple ones can run at the same time. Navigation matching in CSS, to allow you to customize the transitions from within CSS instead of using page swap and page reveal. And finally, gesture-driven transitions for cross-document navigations that allow you to use a drag or a swipe gesture to navigate from one page to the other to give you a native-like swipey experience right on the web. And that's only a few of the features we are looking into. For all of these, we are actively looking for feedback and suggestions. And that's it for the next big step for view transitions. We are launching view transitions for cross document navigations with the add view transition add rule, the page swap and page reveal events, and navigation activation information. We are also launching a few refinements to more easily work with view transitions, 
both in SPA and MPA. There is the view transition class to the dupe your animation code, and you also have view transition types along with new selectors that allow for easier customization. Go visit the link shown on screen to read the detailed documentation on all of these new features. Now, I'm very curious to see what you all are going to build with view transitions. Leave a comment in the comment section below or reach out on social media to share your code. Until next time. <laughs>